I've always been fascinated by night vision, but a lot of the products on the market are really expensive. So today I'm gonna to show you how you can turn an Android smartphone into a real set of night vision goggles for less than $50. So first we're gonna go over the supplies you'll need and then we'll go over the science and then we'll get building. So let's get started. Okay, supplies. Everything you see on the table here can be found in the video description down below. If you click the Amazon affiliate links that I provided, it helps me out, but also it helps you find exactly what you're shopping for. That is extremely important when it comes to the web camera. This is the Logitech C170, and because we're going to be modifying this later, I want to make sure you pick up this exact webcam so you can follow along step by step. You're also going to need an OTG connector. This lets us connect standard USB devices directly to our smartphone. Uh, depending on if your smartphone is micro USB or type C, make sure to pick up the corresponding OTG connector. I have a Samsung Galaxy S4, but as long as you have an Android, your phone should work. However, you're going to need to go to the Play Store and download this application so you can use your phone with your webcam directly. You're also going to need an IR flashlight. Now the listing I provided gives you two options. You can get the three chip or the four chip model. The three chip is less expensive, but the four chip is a lot more powerful. I recommend going with the four chip. You're also going to need a roll of double-sided foam tape. That way you can connect your USB webcam and your flashlight to your headset. This is the Samsung Gear VR headset. If you have a Google Cardboard headset, that should work. Although I like the way this one looks a little bit better. And also it's a lot more comfortable. Okay, that's it for supplies. Now we can go over the science behind this project and then we can get building. Now, in order to understand the science behind our project, first we need to look at waves. Light can be expressed in the form of a wavelength. In other words, the visible spectrum has a wavelength, something like this. Now, once we start stepping outside of the visible spectrum, if we go to a shorter wavelength, such as X-rays, these are invisible to the human eye due to their much shorter wavelength. The same thing is true for radio waves, which happen to have a much longer wavelength, which is also invisible to the naked eye. Now, somewhere in between visible spectrum and radio waves exists infrared light, or IR light. IR light has a longer wavelength than the human eye is capable of seeing. However, digital cameras are able to see infrared light, and I can prove this to you if you take a look at a television remote. Television remotes use infrared LEDs, which are invisible to the human eye, but are able to be detected by digital cameras. Now here's where things get interesting. Although digital cameras have the ability to see infrared light, almost every camera that you encounter will come stock from the factory with a filter that is explicitly meant to filter out most infrared light. This is done to improve overall image quality. However, for our purposes, we are going to need to disassemble this web camera and remove our infrared filter so we can see the full infrared spectrum and effectively see in the dark. Okay, the first step is to remove the IR filter from the Logitech webcam. So we're going to begin by disassembling this webcam and remove two screws on the back of the body. Once that's done, you can open up the web camera and pop out that microphone. And the next step is to remove the two screws that hold the circuit board in. One's here and one is here. And before we pop out the circuit board, make sure to remove these wires. Okay, and the circuit board should come right out. All right, hopefully you can see this little mark I made with my knife. That represents the 12 o'clock position on the lens. So the next step is I'm going to unscrew this. I'm going to count how many exact times it takes to unscrew this lens. That way when I reinstall it, I can make sure it's in the exact same position. All right, I have my PCB taped down to the table. Okay, that was pretty easy. Here you can see the image sensor on the camera and here you can see the lens and that little red piece of glass right there is the IR filter that we are going to try to remove. So the next step is to make a small incision and hopefully pop that IR filter out all in one piece. Okay, I'm back. So essentially what I did was I took my X-Acto knife and very carefully I carved on the sides of these threads until the IR filter cracked into two pieces. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my X-Acto knife and very carefully fish out each half of the IR filter. There's one. Okay, that actually turned out to be three pieces. Okay, next step is to reassemble. Uh, 
Okay, reassembly. Now this should be relatively simple as soon as I get these threads started. And I think I felt them catch right there. Okay, now keeping track of the amount of rotations that it takes to get this camera back into focus, I'm going to carefully screw this back into place. All right, my mark is back exactly at 12 o'clock, and we are ready to reassemble this camera. All right, the reassembly process is relatively simple. It's pretty much what we just did, except in reverse order. So first step is to place the PCB back into the body. Make sure to plug those wires back in. Place that microphone back into the slot where it goes. All right, and there you have it. One Logitech C170 with the IR filter removed. Okay, time for a test run. So I have my phone with the app launched. I also have my webcam with my OTG connector connected. All right, so let's plug this baby in, see if it still works. And hey, we got an image. All right, and now I also have the IR flashlight. And as you can see, you only get a little bit of a red glow from this camera because its IR filter is still installed. However, when we take a look through the webcam, it picks up way more. Awesome, that's a great sign. All right, let's move on. Okay, if you got through that first step, everything else is going to be a breeze. Trust me, it's downhill from here. Now, we're gonna do some work on the VR headset. And first, we're gonna have to remove these four rubber screw covers. And then we're also going to have to remove this plastic screw cover. All right, next all we have to do is unscrew these six screws. All right, that wasn't that bad. Now, I believe the last step is to Turn this knob on the top continuously until the entire assembly comes apart. Now be careful because it's going to be attached on this little ribbon cable right here. And the last thing that we need to unscrew are these guys right here. Okay, now that we've removed that plate, this portion here can actually just pop right off. Okay, I would recommend holding on to this um, because if you ever want to restore your Samsung Gear VR, you can always just put this thing back together and use it as it was originally intended. And now we can just reassemble everything. Okay, next we're gonna do a little bit of carving into the plastic. It just so happens that the Samsung OTG connector fits very snugly right into this hole, which is gonna work perfect for us. However, it sits a little bit high, and we wanna make sure that when the OTG connector is plugged into the phone, this entire system sits flush against the VR headset. So in order to ensure that we have a proper fitment, we're going to need to use our knife to carve down this wall. Okay, that should do it. So now when we install this OTG connector, that sits a lot lower in there. And that's gonna give us a nice flush fit when we install our phone. Much better. That's perfect. Okay, we're almost done. I've gone ahead and installed the head strap to my Gear VR, and the last step is to install the IR light and the webcam to the top of your headset. So I'm going to cut a couple layers of foam tape and install both of these items right up there.
Okay, that looks pretty good. So the last thing I'm gonna do is hide this wire down in this crevice here, and then I'm gonna coil it up and store it right behind this flap of Velcro. All right, and you are pretty much done. That is a complete Samsung Gear VR Android night vision headset. Okay, so I'm gonna go over a couple settings that you're gonna to wanna to change in the app in order to use these. So first, open up the app, go to the top right hand corner, click settings, and you're gonna to wanna to enable cardboard view. That's what lets us use this in VR mode. Uh, you're probably also going to want to disable the microphone so you don't get any audio feedback. Then we click back and and if you press the center of the screen, it'll take you into full screen mode. And there is a banner out at the top. You don't actually see that when you're using the VR headset, but if you do want to get rid of that, you can always pay for the full version of the application. Next, all we have to do is pop off the cover, plug in the OTG connector, and as soon as we do so, you're going to see the green light pop on right there on the actual webcam. Squeeze everything together, and then always for safety and cool factor, reinstall the front cover and man there you go your night vision's working all right it's nighttime now which means we get to test out our night vision so i have the night vision goggles set up i have this camera set up and i'm now going to turn off my studio lights so we can see what the difference is okay give me one quick sec here lights are out and now the infrared flashlight is on so I still can't see anything, but I assume I'm looking pretty good here. So let's take a look around the room and see what we got. Here's the back wall that we were looking at. And here is the camera that we were looking at. That's you guys. And everything is looking pretty good. Wow, the room really does just light up. Well, that's awesome. Okay, wow, that was a lot of fun. I think that was a big success. Um, let me give you a couple tips before you go, though. So, one thing is, these setups can get a little bit claustrophobic if you wear them for a long time, and that's because these cameras have a relatively tight field of view. So one way to combat this is to pick up a clip-on wide-angle lens. Now, a lot of companies make these for smartphones, but they will actually fit your web camera perfectly. So, one company I've always had good luck with is Aki and they make really quality products and I'll leave an affiliate link in the description down below if you want to find one but this will overall make your night vision experience much much more enjoyable and it actually lets more light into the camera as well so I'd really suggest picking one of these up now another great option is picking up another IR flashlight so you can have a dual IR setup this will let more light into the system it'll help keep your frame rate higher and you'll be able to see farther away objects now the last tip is Make sure when you pick up that next flashlight, not to forget to turn it off because these things are really easy to forget about because remember, humans can't see the IR light and that's what makes this entire system so cool. But overall, I think this is a great project. It's really not that difficult. You can finish it in an afternoon and I had a lot of fun making it. I hope you guys have just as much fun watching as I had making and please leave a comment, give me some support, give me a like and subscribe if you want to see some more projects in the future. Have a great day and happy making.